Aliens Explored is a podcast exploring famous and obscure cases of UFO sightings, alien abductions and other strange events from both a believing and a sceptical perspective whilst keeping an open mind. I'm Stu Jackson, a professional actor and amateur ufologist with a particular interest in the crop circle phenomenon. I'll be debating that otherworldly visitations are real. The truth is out there. And I'm Neil Kelly. I'm a professional actor as well and used to work for the military as an intelligence analyst. I'll be arguing from a more doubtful point of view. I mean, it's all a bit far-fetched, isn't it? What strange worlds do we enter into as we hover on the edge of sleep? What tricks can our minds play on us? Can we ever be sure that we are indeed fully asleep or awake? Or is there a range of waking states between the two? Join us on Aliens Explored as we examine psychological theories that vivid and terrifying experiences of alien abductions can be caused by sleep disorders. Welcome listeners to this week's episode of Aliens Explored, where we explore the strange, unnatural and otherworldly in terms of unidentified aerial phenomenon, UAPs or UFOs (laughs) as they used to be known. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Stu Jackson. And I'm your other host, Neil Kelly. And this week it's a Neil episode because... This is something you you particularly wanted to discuss this week, isn't it? Um, it, it was something that came up. It's um, it's something that's that doesn't just apply to um, alien abductions, um, to being taken aboard UFOs. Um, it's something that that covers uh, a whole range of strange experiences throughout history, and it's to do with um, sleep paralysis. Now, sleep paralysis is something that we we all, I'm going to say, succumb to. No, it's just a normal part of going to sleep. That um, when you go to sleep, um, your body goes into a slightly paralysed state, to which really to prevent you from from acting out your dreams. Yes. When you punch someone in a dream, you're not actually you're not actually throwing fists around in your bedroom and, and you know taking out your your partner. Although that does Although sometimes some people happen. do, yeah. <laughs> some people do, yeah. I've, I've done it myself. Yeah, <laughs> you start thrashing around in, in bed. Oh, um, poor Janet. Yeah, sleep paralysis is, <laughs> yeah, is meant to... Yeah. <laughs> you keep punching her in her sleep. Yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> it, was just that, it was just that one time. It was that one time. Um, and, and I didn't punch her. Actually, it was a weird thing. She was, she was lying on my arm... My arm was on the other, you know, sort of hanging out of the bed. Her head was on, on sort of resting sort of, sort of on my upper arm, shoulder. Um, and I felt someone grab my hand from under the bed. And so and so I just sort of leaned, sort of threw myself <laughs> over Janet and sort of threw a fist over to, to try and knock away whatever it was that had grabbed me, um, which, of course, terrified Janet. Yeah. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I've never been allowed to forget it. It was nearly 20 years ago, and it still comes up that time I lashed out. <laughs> but so, yeah, your, your body goes into a state of paralysis, and it's this idea that um, you can wake up, that your 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 brain wakes, or your, your, you know, your consciousness wakes up, but your body doesn't. And so you have this strange experience that you feel pinned down, um... Or, or you even you know not not really awake, still dreaming perhaps, but you think you're awake, um, um, suffering from hallucinations and unable to move, feeling pinned down, and uh, that's that's been attributed to all kinds of supernatural experiences throughout the centuries. Um, you know, in years gone by, it would have been witches and goblins, that sort of thing, in the modern era where. Yeah, because because they, those would have been the bogies that that people would have fixated on, that they would have attributed strange phenomena to. Um, of course, in in the modern age, we have a more scientific bogey in in forms of in in, in the form of um, someone from another planet visiting and and doing things to you. So, um, yeah, that 
the, the question is how many people who think they've been um, abducted by aliens have actually just had that kind of experience which apparently is a very normal experience yes it is now um to, to give our listeners a little bit of a peek behind the curtain um what what happens with neil and i with these episodes is uh we discuss like what general topic we, we might choose to discuss or what event we might choose to discuss and then we go away separately and research them we don't we, we don't converse about that particular topic uh, before we do the recording so what you're actually hearing is the first time that neil and i have ever discussed what the the, the, the event happens to be isn't that fair to say neil nothing scripted about this show no there really isn't and i think you know in in some ways that shows but i don't think that's a bad <laughs> thing either because you know I, I mean if it sounds natural which you know obviously we hope it does but the, the reason mm. is it's because it is natural this is just us talking about these things where we've mm. never discussed them before now when neil suggested this idea this this topic um i i inwardly got quite excited about it um Partly, partly because it, it's an area of great interest to me, um, mm. because I I have suffered greatly with sleep paralysis uh, many times in my life, um, and indeed night terrors, and also uh, I, I I don't know I think I might have shared this with you in the past Neil, um, mm. but I might not have done, but um, I'm also I, of the belief that I have been subjected to alien abduction when I was much much younger uh, no this is this is new to me I think this is the okay. first time I'm hearing um, this <laughs> so, live on our show <laughs> live on the show okay <laughs> yeah. uh, well I mean that's a the, yeah um, the, the events surrounding that I, I probably won't go into on this episode but you know maybe that's one for the future who knows yeah. um, but yeah, so I've in my head sort of put these things together in the past. Um, I'm, I, I, I personally don't believe they're the same thing, but we'll go into that in a bit. So, yeah, I was mm. I was really quite intrigued when you came up with this. Um, yeah, knowing yeah, I think um, sort of both sides of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, we I think we've all had strange experiences on the what you might call the fringe of sleep. Um, I've been sort of just dozing when suddenly there was a loud bang in the room as if someone had thrown a ball and it had hit the dressing table. Really, really loud bang. And, and I sort of woke up and I was looking around and I couldn't see any evidence. There was no one around. There was no ball. There was no there was this, this loud bang. And I thought, was that, was that just a dream? But it just seemed so real. It, uh, the sound of it was still ringing in my ears. Yeah. Yep. I, and I can explain that one. That would have been a dream. Now, for me, the the closest I get to that is when I'm like walking along a path and my foot slips off suddenly and it jolts me. Yeah. That jolt. Yeah. What what happens? There's a really interesting physiological thing happening there. As you're going to sleep, obviously your blood pressure drops and drops and drops. If it drops too hmm. low, as, as happens quite often with people. Your body or or your mind will create a, a dreamlike scenario that that jolts you to get your blood pre to get your heart pumping to get your blood pressure back up. Oh wow! Because it that's certainly works. very much yeah. what that sounds like. I'll, yeah, I've, I've had yeah. that um, a few times. That 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 sort of missing a step or something and getting that that jolt. Yes, yeah. that's that's usually what that is. But I've also yeah. had the experience where I'm lying awake in bed just sort of looking at the ceiling and, and thinking of odd things and suddenly my wife will nudge me and say turn over you're snoring and I'll say <laughs> but I'm awake and she'll say no you're not turn over. so yeah anything could I guess anything, you, know, you think you're awake but actually you're just dreaming that you're lying in bed awake while you're while you're asleep yes or dreaming that you're having a dream I've had as well mm. That's a bizarre one. I mean, I, um, I, it's, a, it's a classic. I mean, I, it was the first time I saw it cinematically was in an American werewolf in London where he dreams about the, the, the Nazis with pig faces coming and wiping out his family and he wakes up with a jolt 
and the nurse is next to him and she says, oh, I'll get you something for that. She opens the curtains and one of those Nazis jumps through the window and kills her. <laughs> and then he, he yeah. jolts awake again. He, he, he only dreamt that he woke up. Yeah, so. great movie, great movie. Mm. Um, okay, so, I mean, so back on to topic. I know there have been numerous uh, scientific studies or... Mm. or do you know, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to backtrack that slightly. Pseudo scientific studies, um, and mm. do you know what? I'm, no, I'm going to launch straight in and say why mm. I don't think they're proper scientific studies. In order for proper statistical analysis to be done, um, you need certain sample sizes, mm. um, and I have yet to see. And, and perhaps you might correct me on this, but I have yet to see a study on this that goes beyond maybe a dozen people mm. which is woefully inadequate for a, a, a decent sample size to do a proper statistical analysis um, I mean back when I so I used to work in, in statistical analysis many years ago um, we always just said you know you need a minimum of 30 samples mm. in order for it to to even start to become anything like because less than that it could all be just skewed data. Mm. Um, you can't draw any general conclusions yeah. from a small sample. Exactly. But, so is is there a particular scientific study that you've looked at with this, or is this more sort of hypothesising? Where, where are you coming it, It's more hypothesising. There, there was an article in the New York Times about um, a, a scientist um, who's researching it in Japan, a Canadian scientist, Jean-Christophe Therion, who wakes up and, and senses the presence of a threatening evil being beside his bed. Um, he's paralysed. He, he, he's unable to raise an arm or, or make a sound. Um, he's, he can feel the weight on his chest. He's struggling for breath. And um, sometimes he feels himself being transported upwards or, or going through a long tunnel. And, and even though he's a scientist who doesn't believe that evil spirits go around haunting people, it's still... For him, a terrifying experience. Yes, that sounds very familiar. So, um, so someone who doesn't have any context, someone who knows nothing about ASP sleep or you know, the the, the, the um, sleep paralysis phase of sleep, um, no knowledge of it, who suddenly has this experience, but who also spends an awful lot of time studying UFOs, they're gonna. You know they're going to link the two, aren't they? That's the the, the first thing they're going to think of. Uh, yeah, I can certainly see that, and and there are so many parallels between sleep paralysis and and um, abduction stories that you mm. hear. You know the, this well, the paralysis in of itself, this inability to move, uh, like you say, this sinister presence, mm. and the mind has this amazing ability to to fill in gaps so even though you might sort of believe you're aware of a presence even if you can't see one you'll you'll still picture them in your mm. head so you, you'll form pictures uh, and the mind fills in all these but the, the mind abhors a vacuum in terms of mm. knowledge so even if it can't see a thing it'll still be able to picture it it'll it'll create a picture of, mm. of what it thinks it might be um so yeah, and they're trans being transported upwards, uh, bright lights. Yeah, they're all they're all fairly consistent uh, with many many abduction stories. That uh, also, uh, I mean, something that looms large in my dreams will be a movie that I've recently watched. Yeah, especially if it's sci-fi horror, you know, that that will feature in the movie. That that will. So I, I can see oh, how yeah, if, if you if you watch a lot of stuff about UFOs, yeah, that's going to be incorporated into all your. All your imaginings, the 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 the, you know, the figures you see standing around your bed, will of course take the shape of the figures you've just seen in the in the movie. Yes, oh, quite likely. So I say, of course, but you know. no, I I yeah, I I think we've all experienced that. Um, where I mean, you tend to, or the dreams you you tend to remember are the ones that are based on what you were thinking about as you went to sleep. So yeah. yeah. Um, and totally get that and isn't it true that you only really I mean we all dream there'll be lots of people who claim they never dream 
but you, you just don't remember it. Yeah, that you you only actually remember a dream if you wake up out of it. If you if you asleep and you have a dream and then you stay asleep, you won't remember that dream when um, you're awake. That's what. What about um, those of us that can remember multiple dreams from a single sleep session? Yeah, I mean I've had that, but um, maybe you wake up. Maybe there, there's some you you come out of sleep a little bit. Uh, yeah, quite possibly because yeah. you you do actually do these micro waking. Or I I used to have a sleep condition called um, obstructive sleep apnea, hmm. uh, which basically you, you stop breathing during the night. Mine was caused by my tonsils being oversized and blocking up my airways. Um, hmm. They did a study on me. I had it quite severely. Apparently, I was waking up about three hundred and fifty odd times a night, on average. Wow. But it was so quick. I, I didn't remember waking up at all. All I knew was how shattered I felt <laughs> constantly. Because yeah. uh, I wasn't getting any... R I had about 15 years of no REM sleep virtually. Um, yeah, I was in... Yeah, till they removed my tonsils. Um, yeah, so... so Yes, I, I, I can... I can see that being a valid explanation that actually it's not been the same sleep session. It mm. just feels like it. Um yeah. Um, so okay, I, 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 I'm on board with all of that. I mean, I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this. I'm not saying, you know, people have never been abducted by aliens. I can't, I can't go that far. If they, they say they've been abducted, maybe they have been abducted. But there is also this phenomenon that could explain a lot of, a lot of these apparent experiences. Well, this ultimately is where there's a danger inherent with with such things um perhaps not an intentional one but the naysayers could very easily just turn around and say yeah but look there's an explanation mm. that's it you know a bit like you know we, we've and, and i keep mentioning doug and dave of the crop circle hoaxing mm. you know all the media did for for decades was just say Oh no, it's all explained. Doug and Dave did them, yeah. you know, and that was it. There was no. Because there's an ex there's a mundane explanation on offer. Oh well, that must be it then. There's yeah. an easy People explanation. Will. Yes. Um, so and of course, I that's think... what it's oh, Occam's razor, isn't it? The, the, the simplest explanation is going to be the one that people will say, "Well, that's what it's." I mean, Occam's razor can be a very, a very dangerous thing as well. Like, like any razor, if you if you leap on the simple solutions. That's why quite often um, right-wing theories um, triumph over, over over more academic theories, right-wing reactionary theories. For instance, why do... I don't, don't want to get into race here, but, but yeah, if, or if you want to say, well, why do, why do young black men do less well academically than, than their, their white counterparts... Um, well, the simple Occam's razor explanation is because their brains are smaller or they're not as bright. or you know, they're, they're fairly, um, But that's not looking into the whole context, their, 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 their living environment, their social environment, um, the cultural bias of the education they're receiving, all those kinds of things. That makes for a more complicated study. So the simple argument, they're just stupider. Um, is is the Occam's razor? So yeah, I'm I'm, ca I'm cautious with the Occam's razor argument. Yes, and and in in your analogy, as well as I think in this case as well, yeah. um, <laughs> there's also potentially an uncomfortable answer. Whereas the simple answer is a much more comfortable, easy to digest one, one that doesn't make you feel as guilty or as bad or as fearful it, it doesn't yeah force you to rethink your universe yes um, which is one of the biggest stumbling blocks yeah and um, apparently it, can find. yeah and it, it is a cultural thing um there's a, a psychologist at fukushima university in japan um a, a, a kasuhiko Fuku, fukuda my apologies to kasuhiko fukuda for that mispronunciation um, tweeters says, though, tweeters with how it's supposed to be yes. pronounced. <laughs> so um, yeah, he says that um, sleep paralysis is well known to most Japanese, um, and they call it uh, kanashibari. Very well known, and they 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 regularly have it. Um, it was this phenomenon that was once thought to be rare. It, it, it's um, they they 
it's been suggested it it may strike at least 40 or 50 percent of all people at least once um, a study in Newfoundland Canada found that more than 60% had experienced it. So while the Japanese know what it is and they have a name for it, they, they have this experience, oh yeah, it was uh, Kanushibari, Kanashi, Kanashibari. Um, in North America, they don't have that concept. So that they have this, this experience that they have no context for, um, apart from whatever, whatever's there to fill the void, like um, a UFO that's that's very interesting and and do you know what culturally i'm, I'm going to i'm going to go a little bit into stereotypes here mm. so apologies to listeners for this and i fully appreciate this mm. doesn't apply to everyone but in america um you tend to have a lot more machismo mm. um and a lot more you know uh, reticence about talking about fears about talking about how uncomfortable you know about basically so when mm. this happens i can tell you it is a terrifying experience um mm. to have this this sleep paralysis you also i mean with, with the sleep paralysis on its own all sorts of things go through your mind you know first of all like what is happening to you but you think my god am i paralyzed Hmm. Is this it for the rest of my life? Am I going to be in? And, and you, um, <laughs> figuratively, you, you shit yourself. Hmm. Um, That's you know, literally. It is abs- <laughs> well, <laughs> in some cases, in no extreme doubt, but, cases, yeah. um, but it is an absolutely terrifying event, hmm. and certainly for for the Western world, I'll say rather than just America. I think America perhaps has it a little bit worse than. Than, than some other countries but you know certainly in the UK we're pretty bad for it hmm. you know y- as a man you don't talk about things that make you scared that makes you less of a man hmm. which is absolute bollocks and you know I defy anyone to come at me with <laughs> on that one hmm. um, but you know it, it's absolutely nonsense but it's what we're culturally sort of bred and, and programmed into us uh, isn't it it, it is. I, I, I really remember once going to see a film called The Others, uh, a Nicole mm. Kidman film, about getting on, I guess, nine or ten years ago now. And I sat in the cinema and people were just chuckling constantly. People were laughing. I thought, there's nothing funny about this. And I, I realised, yeah, it's nervous laughter. But they're, they're, that, that's how they, they're processing their fear. They're just trying to laugh it off. Yes. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was. I've, I've never known it so much because it's quite a creepy film, and although it's only twelve certificate, you know, it's suitable for children. It um, there were adults there who were displaying this nervous laughter. Yeah, you know, I recognised yeah. it for what it was. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I, I, so to to sort of touch a little bit on my own experiences then. Hmm. Um, for me, I can quite easily and readily separate the two events. Um, for one thing, when I had the um, the the night terrors and the sleep paralysis, yes, you do you do get this overwhelming sense of this sinister feeling. This, mm. this, uh, but there were no actual figures there um i mean i could imagine figures but i Mm. that's it i was imagining them i wasn't actually seeing anybody there um i say anybody any anything there um and it was emotionally i suppose there were similarities but overall, they were totally different experiences. Hmm. Um, it, it's really hard for me to to quantify why that is. It felt very different. They were both terrifying, but they both felt hmm. very different. Um, it. You know, I, I'll I'll give you a. Going on a roller coaster can be quite terrifying, hmm. um, and gets your adrenaline up and gets your heart racing that's why we do it and for the fun because we absolutely. enjoy that yeah the exhilaration absolutely 
and watching a horror film is terrifying and gets the adrenaline going and gets mm. your heart racing. But you also know they are very different experiences, even though physiologically the same thing might be happening. Mm. And you're doing it for the same reason, yeah. really. You also, as you're doing those things, you know they are very, very different things mm. happening. D- does that make sense? Yeah, you're, you're, but you're still seeking the same thrill, aren't you? One of them's, one of them's a more physical, well, physical danger kind of thing. One's a more, um, yeah, otherworldly, that, scary. That's what I'm saying. That with when it comes to the the night terrors, the sleep paralysis, the the sleep disorders, it might be that there are parallels with many alien abduction stories. I'm saying many because mm. there are some alien abduction stories that don't fit the same descriptor mm. there, there are many that do and I, I wholeheartedly recognise that um, but you just know it's a different experience you just know it's a different thing when you've experienced both Yeah, um, but I'm going to throw in as well with the alien abduction side there are of course many many examples of people who didn't know they had an alien abduction experience until it comes out under hypnosis and regression hmm um, and I think kind of the sleep disorder wouldn't wouldn't really explain those very readily. Um, there's the repeated imagery that people get, you know, totally separate people on different continents mm. with different life experiences completely having the same imagery uh, as each other. Uh, but you know, thank, thanks to Hollywood, we, we do have, we do all have the same imagery of, of, of UFOs and, and, and such like there's a, a sort of universality. Um, whereas, you know, in, in, in you know, 100 years ago or such, we didn't have that. The Chinese or the Japanese would, would attribute it to different things to say a European, you know, the, 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 the old hag or witches taking them for a flight on a broomstick, that, that sort of well, even experience. much more recent than that, you know, um, 70 years ago, the the grey type alien, you know, with mm. the arm and shape, the oval shaped head and the big arm and shaped black eyes, um, that wasn't really in the public arena as an image, yet it was experienced by people disparately mm. uh, with these stories. Um, so, do you know what? That's probably a good place for us to summarise our thoughts. Um, and and mm. obviously, this is a an audio podcast, um, but yeah. we're doing this over Zoom. And I can see you look very, very thoughtful about this, Neil. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> what what what? It, what's making you so thoughtful about it? I'm I'm thinking. Where, where am I going with this exactly? Um, I'm, I'm thinking about the strange tricks your mind plays on you, and and how that how that dovetails into the whole UFO experience, and how when you go to sleep your mind is processing all sorts of things, um, not just movies that you've seen, but um, doubts you might have about things. And I, know, I remember once waking up from quite a. It wasn't that the dream was so vivid, but I woke up with this really. Um, really disturbed feeling this really I felt really un, unsettled and realized that someone who I'd I'd put my trust in over something something quite important in my life I thought actually I can't trust them mm. and it was just and I guess that's your 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 mind is just you know, your your subconscious mind is 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 processing things and and matching things you know, firing off synapses making connections and and suddenly think, oh yeah, that that something that that didn't really register in a, in a conversation or something suddenly looms very large, and um, you realise oh that that little thing that you couldn't quite put your finger on actually that's very significant. Don't don't detectives suddenly solve crimes in their sleep? They certainly do on television, don't they? You know, they, they suddenly wake up and think, oh my well, god, that- it's it, it's. Well, many people say that's what dreams are, and I think it's it's part of what... I don't Mm. think it's the whole story when it comes to dreams, but yeah, sort of mental filing, Mm. where you process the events of the day, or you process, you know, that Mm. that includes the things you've been thinking about that day. 
Yeah. Not just the things that have happened to yeah. you. Your daydreams, um, your, yeah, your that, movies. Your, you know. Yeah, they, that processing. That's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I can I can recognise that. Hmm. Um. So, um, but but oh, go on. No, sorry. You go ahead. Hmm. Well, I was going to say. So, so to summarise, then, do you feel? I mean, you 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 you've you've started this discussion in a in a very open-minded sort of way and saying, well, mm. you know, I don't know if this is the entire story, but, you know, here we are, mm. here's a theory. Having discussed it now, um, do you still feel that this is the... this is a a one answer, or... Um, I where think are you now? <laughs> I, I think it, it's it's one possible answer. It, it's a... it's a... it's something that, that needs to be explored... Um, when people are claiming to have these experiences, to have been kidnapped from their beds and taken to a spacecraft, um, yeah. But but we, I mean, we're all aware that we can be in in various states of sleep and wakefulness. That you thought you were awake, but actually you were asleep. People sleepwalking, people doing all all kind, getting all kinds of confused. Maybe if you had a few drinks as well, and you get up in the night and you lose your, you 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 you, you forget where you are. That that sort of thing. You wake up in a strange hotel room and you're trying to find the toilet, but you, you have you've, you've kind of forgotten you're not in your own house. <laughs> oh, oh, you know. I've never done that. I'll be honest, uh, but you know, there's a first time for everything. Yeah. Um, so I, I think yeah, yeah there, there's an awful lot that needs looking into. It. Just just the way, if we're going to be talking about, um, well, I suppose not supernatural, but extraterrestrial phenomena, we also have to think about the way our brains work and the way our brains process things um that and and you know i, th- I think it was the, the maharishi yogi who said how can we tell the difference between a real experience and a vividly imagined experience if indeed there is a difference mm. that's a very very good point but you know what this is one of those rare episodes where you and I I think are very much on the same page with this um, I I agree entirely that there needs to be more research into this mm. um, as I said very early on the, the studies that you see are done with like you know 10 people 12 people mm. um, you know 6 people it, they're, they're handfuls um, and they're not people taken at random as either simply because there just isn't the funding there to to do proper proper scientific research into this which i think there desperately needs to be and Mm. i am absolutely certain that if such scientific research was done it would prove conclusively that some alien abduction um stories were indeed night terrors or or sleep paralysis or you know or, or hallucinations I'm absolutely convinced, but I also equally am firmly convinced that many won't have been, Hmm. that many will be a separate experience. But without that research, it's impossible to tell between the two. Um, And that's where, you know, I think if we're going to take alien abductions seriously, yes, we absolutely need to research the more mundane things as well, so that we can rule them out mm. as appropriate. Or, you know, we can either rule out it as a possibility in an event, or we can rule out an event from the raw data. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, uh, but we're not there. Nobody takes it seriously. No, and, and I think, you know, I suppose, yeah, I suppose, I should have said this earlier. I mean, talk about earlier times before people thought about UFOs and visitors from other planets when the sky was just, it was just, fairy lights in the sky um th- that was the universe when they they'd imagined they'd, they'd been kidnapped by witches and taken away by I mean, some of it could have just been sleep paralysis some of it could have been someone with a deliberate agenda i i want to accuse this person of being a witch for my own yeah. gain um i want to get rid of this woman i want to take over her business i want to whatever whatever um or, or i want to collect a bounty on her head for being a witch um, all sorts of things were going on in the, especially in the seventeenth century. So yeah, all sorts. Of, I mean, obviously we can't study those people now, but we we can know that even though, yeah, even though we we can't study them, 
they probably had some of them probably had those experiences but probably some of them they had a real reason for faking that experience yeah and it, here's another thought for you maybe some of them were alien abductions that they were they were passing off as oh well it was witches because that's the that's, limit of their that's vocabulary what, that's the limit yeah. of their understanding um and it is very hard to say but again this is where your research comes into it is because by understanding these things much better you can look at historical records no matter how vague and mm. start to understand those a bit better as well but it all takes time it all takes research um yeah well thank you for, for i mean that's it's a brilliant topic <laughs> for discussion um and i'm really glad you you raised it and i hope you are too listeners uh really hope you've enjoyed this episode i know i certainly have um and tell us of course you know i say this every week um and we absolutely mean it do tell us what you think as well on this topic and all the topics that we discuss on aliens explored uh, by the usual means you can contact us through facebook or through twitter by searching aliens explored or you can go to aliensexplored.com and uh, don't forget to leave us that review wherever you listen to your podcasts because those are the lifeblood of little podcasts like ours and help other people to find them well, don't forget to join us next time uh, when we will be discussing a very recent event. Um, so, Neil, you'll remember a while ago we talked about the COVID bill uh, containing UFO disclosure as a subclause. Yes, yes. Which is very rare. Yeah. Well, quite recently, uh, the former intelligence jet director John Ratcliffe has been dropping some teasers about what might be in there. Ooh. So we'll be discussing those. So don't forget to join us for that one, listeners. Very, very exciting indeed. In the meantime, keep watching those dreams. And listen to this. Take care for now. Sweet and dreams, everyone. <laughs> Bye. 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 Aliens Explored is a Fiegel Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by Darren Mafucci and editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Twitter and Facebook by searching Aliens Explored or visit aliensexplored.com. <laughs>